We have seen starting from the Cauchy stress tetrahedron finally to reach the characteristic equation and then I1, I2, I3, the three invariants have been obtained. Now we are going to see the applied stress in a different way. We are going to resolve the applied stress into a mean stress component where sigma m is equal to sigma 1 1 plus sigma 2 2 plus sigma 3 3 the three normal stresses acting divide by 3 and then rest is taken in this way. So if I do a matrix addition these two will add up and sigma 1 1 will come and likewise we will get back the original matrix of the stress. Now once we decompose the stress matrix into a mean stress component and a dividatoric stress component we understand from the rock mechanics experiment that this dividatoric stress matrix actually is the reason of the rock's failure. So this becomes more important rather than that for the rock's failure. Now if I find out the dividatoric invariants J1, J2 and J3 from this matrix, how it will look like? Now for this have a look at the determinant here which was previously written as a, in a matrix format. And then we wrote the I1 equal to sigma 1 1 plus sigma 2 2 plus sigma 3 3. So in this case, if I do J1, J1 will in mean sigma 1 1 minus sigma m, this element plus sigma 2 2 minus sigma m, this element plus sigma 3 3 minus sigma m, this element. So this leads to sigma 1 1 plus sigma 2 2 plus sigma 3 3 minus 3 multiplied by sigma m. But 3 multiplied by sigma m is itself sigma 1 1 plus sigma 2 2 plus sigma 3 3. Therefore the J1 invariant comes out to be 0 that is what I am writing here. What this J1 is known as note that J i is called the ith dividatoric stress invariant. So J1 will be called the first dividatoric stress invariant which has to be equal to 0. Now similarly if I find out J2 how to do that you can look at this form I2 here and now here I will replace sigma 1 1 by sigma 1 1 minus sigma m. Sigma 1 2 remains the same, sigma 1 2 remains the same and here sigma 1 1 sigma 3 1. So again here I will replace sigma 1 1 minus sigma m. And here you see it is sigma 3 3, sigma 2 2 and sigma 3 3. So these are the terms which will be put there. And once that is done and simplification is made, we find out that J2 and it is very important is equal to 1 by 6 then multiplied by within third bracket sigma 1 1 minus sigma 2 2 whole square plus sigma 2 2 minus sigma 3 3 whole square plus sigma 3 3 minus sigma 1 1 whole square. Sigma 1 1 can be more than sigma 2 2 or sigma 2 2 can be more than sigma 1 1. But the moment we subtract and square that remains the same. Similarly, this can be more than that or this can be more than that. But if we subtract and square effectively the same number comes out. It does not matter which one is bigger and which one is smaller. The same thing holds true here. Why I told J2 is very important because it is used to calculate the strength of the materials. So if some opportunity comes we will see it in more detail and the strength of material calculation will be linked with the von Mies theory of failure. Right now we are not getting into it let me proceed we may come back to this later on. Now if I ask you a question find out the mean stress invariance just a question what it means for this matrix if I try to find out the three invariants how it will be looking like. So here this has to be erased. I was talking about J1 which is already done there. So let me erase it. So in this case, let us say the M1 invariant will be given by here what did we do? Sigma 1 1 plus sigma 2 2 plus sigma 3 3. So here it will be sigma M plus sigma M plus sigma M which is 3 sigma M and sigma m is the arithmetic mean of the three normal stresses. 
so it will turn out to be sigma i i and sum i equal to 1 to 3. This is the form. Similarly, one can find out m2 and one can find out the m3. I leave this up to the students and you must do. Look at the formulae for i2 and i3. Now take the values here. For example, here you see that sigma ij when i not equal to j that means these elements are all zeros. So accordingly in i2 and i3 you can work and then find out m2 and m3. But then the question is what does it mean physically? What do you think? In case of the deviatoric stress matrix, the deviatoric invariants J1, J2 and J3 had a meaning related to the failure of the rock and what how you can interpret M1, M2 and M3 in the physical sense. It is possible to do and in my subsequent lectures I will explain to you. We will now see some other issues. Now let us see how the pore pressure can alter the characteristic equation and how starting from the Cauchy stress tetrahedron the pore pressure will affect the situation. So, if there is a pore pressure of P, then the matrix that we were dealing will become sigma 1 1 minus P, sigma 2 2 minus P and sigma 3 3 minus P. Why we are writing like this? Because the pore pressure acts against the applied compressive normal stress. We are considering in this particular case that sigma 1 1, sigma 2 2 and sigma 3 3 are compressive in nature and pore pressure is counteracting with it. So, the resultant is sigma 1 1 minus p this one along the direction 2 and along direction 3 is that one. So, the d determinant that we wrote over here by putting minus sigma in this way will be replaced in this way sigma 1 1 minus p minus sigma likewise sigma 2 2 minus p minus sigma sigma 3 3 minus p minus sigma. The other elements such as sigma 1 2, sigma 1 3, sigma 2 1, sigma 3 1, sigma 3 2 etc. remain same as the previous determinant. Now, uh, in the case of the Cauchy stress tetrahedron, when there is a stability, when the small tetrahedron is not rotating, we know that sigma ij has to be equal to sigma ji for i not equal to j. So, the moment I write here as sigma 1 2 and they are as sigma 2 1 they become the same. Sigma 1 3 and sigma 3 1 become the same and sigma 2 3 and sigma 3 2 become the same and this was also the same case which uh, in our first original deduction which was going on d here this sigma 1 2 has to be equal to sigma 2 1. So, therefore, in the terms here in I2 when the expansion was made we are getting sigma square I 1 2 I am not getting sigma 2 1 anywhere. And here in the case of I3 you can see this is sigma 1 2 that is sigma 1 2 I do not see anywhere sigma 2 1 because sigma 1 2 is equal to sigma 2 1 has been considered. Similarly, sigma 3 1 and sigma 3 1 and sigma 2 3 and sigma 2 3. So, that thing being carried forward here as well. Now, if this is the determinant then the first invariant I1 will be given by P is a pore pressure. Now, we know that the sigma mean is equal to sigma 1 1 plus sigma 2 2 plus sigma 3 3 divided by 3. Therefore, this expression is equal to 3 sigma mean. So, I take 3 out and write sigma mean minus P, P being the pore pressure. So, in this way the I1 has been reduced. What about I2? you can look at this expression over here and do suitable replacement. What does that mean? Instead of sigma 1 1 you put sigma 1 1 minus p. Instead of sigma 2 2 in here you put sigma 2 2 minus p. Here sigma 1 1 minus p, sigma 3 3 minus p, sigma 2 2 minus p and sigma 3 3 minus p. Once that is being done and you expand you will get the I2 expression which I am not writing here. Now, I am giving an additional exercise for the students and it must be done. Find out the I2 when P is a very small fraction. Let us say the pore pressure is a, like this 0 0.02 unit. So, what does that mean? P square and P cube term are practically zeros. So, that those are to be avoided. So, in this I2 expanded version 
Wherever there is p square and p cube term, p cube term, you put them as zeros, and then you can find out a simplified i2 when p is a very small unit. Similarly, i3 you can calculate in this case. I may call them as i1 dash, i2 dash, and i3 dash to show the difference between i1, i2, and i3. Okay. Now in the i3 dash, what to do? We know the formula of i3 is given here as a determinant. Here also sigma 1 1, sigma 2 2 and sigma 3 3 will be replaced by sigma 1 1 minus p, sigma 2 2 minus p and sigma 3 3 minus p and then expand it. You will get if an algebraic expression students must do it and then consider that p being a very small fraction. So, in that special case all the p square and p cube terms are considered to be as 0 and then you will get a simplified version. So, what do we learn here when there is a pore pressure applied, how the determinant changes, how the characteristic equation changes and how the invariants i1, i2, i1 dash, i2 dash and i3 dash change. Further, when there is a low amount of pore pressure, very small fraction, then how things change, p square and p cube terms become 0. Having said this, the p term can also be looked in a different way. P what we called as a pore pressure, effectively a fraction of it can work. So, we can put in place of p, we can put alpha multiplied by p, where alpha is called Biot constant. So, everything remains the same. For example, here I can write 3 sigma m minus p is replaced by alpha p. And here i2 dash and i3 dash some changes will happen, students must do. I have in my copy all those detailed expressions, but I am leaving something for the students to do. Okay. So, i2 dash and i3 dash you can do and again when p is a very small number or when alpha p is very small, when alpha p is very small, let us say an example I am giving 0.002. In that case, all the alpha square p square and the alpha cube p cube terms will become 0. Insert them in the i2 dash and i3 dash and find out the respective forms. We have seen how the pore pressure can alter the Cauchy stress tetrahedron problem. We will look for yet generalized situation. Consider that this p pore pressure varies in three directions. So, the effective pore pressure instead of sigma 1 1 minus p I have to write as sigma 1 1. So, the effective pressure sigma 1 1 minus p has to be changed to sigma 1 1 minus p 1 1, sigma 2 2 minus p has to change to sigma 2 2 minus p 2 2, sigma 3 3 minus p has to change to sigma 3 3 minus p 3 3. So, now I am requesting the viewers to insert this over there, this over there and this over there and again find out the three invariants i1 double dash, i2 double dash and i3 double dash. If you are following my lecture since the beginning, you will be able to do. Now find out the i i double dash that means these three invariants for a very small p i i which means what? When we consider that there is very small p i i that means the terms such as p 1 1, p 2 2 p 2 2, p 1 3 3, p 1 1, p 3 3 etcetera in these i 1 double dash, i 2 double dash and i 3 double dash and also the multiplication amongst the 3 p 1 1, p 2 2 and p 3 3 have to be equal to 0. So, in that case find out these invariants. It is an algebraic exercise, but it is required to do. Now, consider similarly that the Biot constant also varies in 3 direction as alpha 1 1, alpha 2 2 and alpha 3 3. If that is the case, then find out the invariants i1 double dash, i2 double dash and i3 double dash, just an algebra. And take a special case when p11 equal to p22 equal to p33 equal to p, that means our previous case all are equal to p, then putting these in these invariants, we should be able to go back to our previous expression. We have seen starting from the Cauchy stress tetrahedron how the stress matrix is broken or decomposed into two parts, the mean stress and the deviatoric stress component. Now, from the deviatoric stress matrix, we have 
obtain the invariance J1, J2 and J3. Now we will see how the J1, J2, J3 will vary or will it at all vary in case the pore pressure is acting. Consider again P amount of pore pressure is acting so that is counteracting with the normal stresses in this way and here the mean stress is given by sum of these three divided by 3. So, sigma 1, 1 plus sigma 2, 2 plus sigma 3, 3 divided by 3 minus P, P and P 3 times it comes. So, 3 P and then divide by 3 it becomes minus P. So, we observe that we can write this as this is our sigma m minus P. Sigma m is the mean stress when there was no such pore pressure was acting. Now, we are going to decompose sigma dash into the mean stress component and the divitoric stress component. So, the mean stress component is given by this sigma dash m is brought inside and then the sigma ij and sig elements where i not equal to j are taken as zeros. And then what happens to the divitoric stress component that is interesting sigma 1 1 minus p minus this plus p. So, p cancelled out and sigma 1 1 minus this expression is equal to 2 sigma 1 1 minus sigma 2 2 minus sigma 3 divided by 3 and rest of the elements go the same. So, I have written for sigma 2 2 minus p also this is the expression and this is our sigma 3 2 and this one I am not writing because of lack of space sigma 3 3 minus p will be this term accordingly will change into basically sigma 3 3 minus p minus this plus p. So, p will cancel it will become here I am not writing. 2 sigma 3 3 minus sigma 1 1 minus sigma 2 2 divided by 3. Now, the interesting observation is that the divitoric stress tensor or the divitoric stress matrix for, for the pore pressure case is same as the divitoric stress matrix when there was no pore pressure acting. So, if that is the case then from this matrix the J 1 dash J 2 dash and J 3 dash has to be equal to J1, J2 and J3 respectively. What is J1, J2, J3? As we have seen earlier, these are the invariants for the divitoric stress tensor where there was no pore pressure acting. Now, once I write J1 dash, J2 dash here, do not try to link straight away with I1, I2, I3. Rather, there are formulas which I have already given that J1 is always 0 and J2 and J3 can be worked out from the given formula. So, henceforth, so, so therefore, you can also work out with the J2 dash, J3 dash and the J1 dash value in this case. So, what was described here in terms of the pore pressure P, suppose the pore pressure varies in three direction as P11, P22 and P33. Now, it is your job to find out asking the students to do the sigma double dash is equal to sigma m double dash plus sigma d double dash. Find out the mean stress in that case, find out the divitoric stress tensor in that case and from the divitoric stress tensor or the divitoric stress matrix find out the j1 double dash, j2 double dash and the j3 double dash. In case of p11 one can also write as alpha 11 p11 in case of P22, one can write alpha 22 P22 and in case of P33, one can write alpha 33 P33 as well and these symbols and meanings I have already described to you earlier. We will now consider a biaxial stress regime and the Cauchy stress tetrahedron case and where there is no pore pressure acting. So, now I am going to put P is equal to 0. So, the matrix simplifies a bit. And as I said, it is a biaxial regime. Consider that there is no shear stress acting. Sigma ij equal to 0 for i not equal to j. That means this term, that one, that one, this term and that term all become 0. Further, sigma 3c itself becomes 0. So, the sigma dash becomes or I can write it now as only as sigma is equal to sigma 1 1 0, sigma 1 1 0 and 0 sigma 2 2. So, it is a 2 into 2 matrix. Now, in this case what is the I 1 the invariant? It is the sum of these two elements sigma 1 1 plus sigma 2 2 and what is I 2? We can look at this formula. 
here many of the elements have become zero like these two have become zero these two have become zero this is also zero and then this has some value but these three are all zero so finally it reduces to only sigma 1 1 multiplied by sigma 2 2 about the i2 now i3 similarly look at this formula and uh, keep only sigma 1 1 and sigma 2 2 as non zero rest of the terms are zeros so in that case i3 becomes also same as i2 equal to sigma 1 1 sigma 2 2 so the characteristic equation is greatly simplified is greatly simplified i would request the students write down because now you know here i1 i2 and i3 values you can write down the expression now after being this being done let's consider a biaxial case when the pore pressure is acting and let's see how things will change and by doing these obvious things we are gaining more confidence on this subject and how we are handling them we are considering as usual sigma ij equal to 0 for i not equal to j and we are considering sigma 3 3 to be 0 so the matrix changes to sigma 1 1 minus p 0 0 sigma 2 2 minus p and then here minus p then here 0 0 0 and 0 this is the expression so from here also applying the formula you can find out the ii values the invariants i will request the students to break this into two components the mean stress component and the deviatoric stress components and then find out the ji invariants from the deviatoric stress component once you have done this there you can put p equal to 0 in the ii and the ji values so you get when there is no pore pressure acting how the invariants ii and the ji look like the students can find out interestingly what happens in case of a uniaxial stress regime and there i can refer to a spring that is being pulled so what happens in the uniaxial stress regime in this matrix only sigma 1 1 is not equal to 0 along only one particular direction the stress is having some value so the deduction that you made right now for the biaxial stress regime there what you need to do in your biaxial deduction put sigma 2 2 equal to 0 if it is a pore pressure case then this is the starting point if there is no pore pressure then p equal to 0 put sigma 2 2 equal to 0 you will find the characteristic equation tremendously simplified and that will be the one and then find out the as usual ii and the ji values from such uniaxial stress regime such as pulling a spring we saw the biaxial stress regime and then from there the uniaxial stress regime now we are going to see the hydrostatic stress regime which means that sigma ij equal to 0 for i not equal to j that means these elements are all zeros but this diagonal all the elements in the matrix are same and that is non-zero let's say sigma 1 1 equal to sigma 2 2 equal to sigma 3 3 is equal to sigma 0 so i have written sigma 0 in three places and we know we can write this also as sigma 0 multiplied by i3 i3 is the identity matrix which is 3 into 3 in this case now from here we can write down i1 the invariant for this what was the formula it was the sum of the three elements in that matrix so here it is 3 sigma 0 i2 we can apply uh, put some zeros here here and there here and there and then here and there so what comes out is 3 sigma 0 square this turns out to be sigma 0 square this is sigma 0 square and that is sigma 0 square so the sum is 3 sigma 0 square i3 so here we put sigma 0 sigma 0 and sigma 0 and these elements are all taken as zeros if we then expand the determinant we find out i3 to be sigma 0 cube 
So from here we find out an interesting relationship for the hydrostatic stress regime that 9 I3 that means 9 sigma 0 cube is equal to I1 multiplied by I2 which is 9 sigma 0 cube. This is an important relation. So this such a situation relation between among the invariants will mean that we are dealing with a hydrostatic stress regime. We can look at it slightly in a different way. Assume that in this characteristic equation sigma 0 is having a value of A. In that case we can expand this cubic expression and we can compare this is same as this, this is same as that I2 this term with a sigma will be same as this and minus I3 is equal to A cube. From there we get I1, I2 and I3 in terms of sigma 0 which is same as what was written. So therefore the relationship comes out. So this is an interesting relationship.